So what I mean by that is it allows that it allows that the students can follow along with their devices while you are presenting the information. And it's a little bit different than because someone asked, well, why get Pear Deck if they can just follow along in a Google um, meet. Well, it makes it more interactive where students can answer questions and do things um, and have sort of embedded formative assessments or quick lesson checks inside the lesson itself. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, I know this is going to be weird. I'm going to stop presenting this and I'm really hoping the sound works on this guy. And I'm going to try and share my tab with this guy and we're going to watch a quick video that kind of sums it up pretty good hey we're, we're excited, excited to tell you that you can add the power of pear deck to google slides imagine if you could engage every student in your class what if you could see instantly who's with you and who's struggling to keep up that's the power of Pear Deck, a formative assessment tool designed by teachers and integrated with Google Classroom to support 100% student engagement. Pear Deck brings your slides to life with interactive questions that can be added to any presentation. We're making it easier than ever to bring the power of Pear Deck to your class. Start with Google Slides, get the Pear Deck Google Slides add-on, and add interactive questions or formative assessments throughout your slide deck. When you're ready, be sure to present with Pear Deck. Your students will join your Pear Deck session from any device with a web browser. Direct them to PearDeck.com slash join and enter the session code to begin. As you advance your slides, students will be prompted to answer your questions and their answers will appear on your teacher dashboard in real time. Answers can be displayed anonymously on the classroom projector. So instead of worrying about getting the right answer and feeling silly in front of peers, your students are putting ideas out there in a safe, anonymous way, discussing and learning from each other. And that's just the beginning of what you can do with Pear Deck and Google Slides. 100% student engagement is just a deck away. Nice, okay. <clears throat> so hopefully you guys could hear that. Um, I like that video because it kind of sums it up in a minute and 68 hey, seconds that I couldn't. You can Come here. Stop. You, stop it. Slides. No. All right. <clears throat> sums it up faster than I could. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out with a Pear Deck account. Um, it can be tied, and we're asking that you do tie it to your Google account. And that's because Pear Deck, because right now with COVID, um, a lot of places are offering really great free things for you. And so they have offered to give our district a free premium accounts starting now <clears throat> all the way until the end of the year. And they should be updated. So this is how we're going to double check this is we're going to go into app.paradeck.com. OK, and you're going to want to log in with your Google account. So I'm going to go to a new slide or not a new slide. I'm going to go to a new tab right here. And if you go to app.paradeck.com. Christina, I, I can't see your slide if that's OK. Oh, OK, it's because I stopped presenting. That's why. Thank you. I wanted to share a tab so we can have sound. And now I forgot. All right. So, yay, we're now at app.paradeck.com, and you're going to come into this first screen. So before we use anything, we want to essentially create a Pear Deck account. And the reason we want to do that through Google is because with premium, you get to keep your sessions, which means you can see and go back to previous student responses on your Pear Deck. Okay, so we're gonna go into teacher login and we're gonna log in with our Google account. Now, as long as you are signed in to Google, it'll automatically put you in there. But if you're not, not a huge deal. I don't think I am, so let's see. Oh, I was. Um, it's just gonna take you to that screen that says sign in with your APS account and your APS password. Now, as long as we have you in a teacher organizational unit, and I know that's kind of weird. So if you don't see this, um, send an email to edtech at aps.edu, and it should work for you, okay? Um, and you're going to sign in, 
And if you have a crown on your head, or if you use this little drop down, it's going to say you have a premium account. So that's how to check to see if you have a premium account. Like I said, and I'll go to the chat here, if you go to edtech at aps.edu, that is who you can email if that is not coming up and we can get to the bottom of why that account isn't working. Uh, to Stacy, there is an if and a but to working on iPads. With Google, how do I put it? As teacher, from the teacher platform to build this, <clears throat> you should use a computer. So to build the actual slide decks themselves, you're gonna need a computer. Using the actual tool itself, any device can use it because you are just going through a web browser with the coded link. So um, I used to have my students always use it on the iPad because I use something called Flashcard Factory, which I'm going to show you guys today. And the students loved drawing on the iPad for that. So most of the time I ever used Pear Deck, I used it with students using their iPads. So hopefully that answers the question. Okay. So in this Paradex space. I'm able to create lessons from here if I want. I can, um, I'll show you that Paradex flashcard factory later. And here is where I can go to something called the orchard and get some I items and tools. But this isn't really the place we're going to be building things in. This is just for us to create and start that account. Okay. Um, I believe I'm trying to remember, do I give permissions for all? I think so. It's been a while since I signed up. I'm sorry. <clears throat> that doesn't appear on mine. Um, I think so. Because it wants to have permission to use your camera and your um, microphone and your screen. So now let's talk about actually getting Pear Deck to work. Okay, so this is where it gets a little bit... I don't want to say confusing, but there's two different places we're going to be venturing into. So we had our home screen that we just went to, to sign up for an account. Now that we signed up for an account, we're going to want to make sure we can use Pear Deck with our Google Slides. So this is where it's going to look a little bit weird. I'm going to go to the presentation we're on right now, which is odd. So I was on this slide, but I'm going to be in the build of a Google slide deck. So if you've never used slides before, this is um, Google's version of PowerPoint essentially, and it's slides.google.com. You can also get there by going to Google and then picking out slides. And you create your slide presentations just like you normally do. But up here, you're going to have an add-on. Now, for some reason, I went through and checked it with a whole lot of people, so I'm gonna show you both things. Because we have that Pear Deck Premium, it should pop up right here for you automatically. So if you go to slides.google.com or slides.new and create a brand new slide presentation, it should um, pop up here and it says Pear Deck. If it doesn't, we're going to get that add-on, okay? So if you don't have it, we're going to go to add-ons. We're going to go to get add-ons, okay? So add-ons are little apps that work within the tool itself to make it function in a different way or do different things. So here I have Pear Deck. If you don't have Pear Deck installed on there, just look up Pear Deck. I already have it, so that's why it's gonna come in. And then you're going to click on it and you're going to get it as an add-on, okay? Once the add-on is installed, it's gonna function through add-ons some more, okay? So I'm gonna click on add-ons again. And now I see that I have something that says Pear Deck for Google Slides add-on, okay? So now I have that add-on. Once I have it, it's gonna have this, um, we call it a carrot, but it's this cute little arrow here on the side. And I'm gonna open that Pear Deck add-on. And what you're gonna notice is a bar on the right is gonna pop up on my screen. And now I have Pear Deck and I can use it while I'm inside Google Slides. I'm going to stop there because that's essentially those first steps. And if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat and I'll see if I can answer them real quick. Awesome. It seems like we're doing pretty good so far. Okay.
You can click the Pear Deck button on top if you do have the Pear Deck. Um, Pear Deck. If it's loading files, it's probably pulling in any type of item or activity that you had had before. Um, you can be in Pear Deck during this presentation if you open it on a new tab. Okay, so you can kind of bounce back and forth. It depends on if you want to watch or if you want to kind of play along. So I'm kind of going a little bit slower, but I do want to finish on time. So it's kind of weird. All right. Um, if you go to slides.google.com or if you open up a slide deck, you are going to be able to get that add-on. Now, some people are going to have this Pear Deck, so you can just click on this Pear Deck and it'll open up on the side. Um, I also mentioned getting the add-on because for some reason, some people have been missing this when we have mentioned it, okay? Um, and the slideshow I'm presenting is going to be available, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you really quick if I go to slides.new or I open a brand new slides presentation, a new one. When I go to build this, that's where that add-on button's gonna be, right up here, add-ons. Or if you are in an organizational domain and you created that Pear Deck um, account on Google, that Pear Deck will automatically show up, okay? Uh, we are going I'm going to show you how to add all the different slides and how you can add them to existing slides and all of that stuff moving on. So just trying to get into getting onto Pear Deck right now. Um, you're welcome. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about how Pear Deck shares so we can get a good understanding of what this is going to look like. And the reason I'm talking about that is because <clears throat> this is how Pear Deck usually works. It was designed to be in a classroom. And I'm saying this because in a minute when we go to build our Pear Deck slides, they're gonna look a lot different on our end as a teacher. Well, not a lot different, but they're gonna look different on our end as a teacher than they will when you're presenting for students, okay? So normally you're gonna have screens that all of the students are going to have in front of them. So in this case, it's gonna say draw the planet that comes after Jupiter. Students are gonna be able to draw their little planet here on their own devices. So it gets pushed out to every single student device. There is also a share screen. This is the screen that we're gonna share in the Google Meet. So there's gonna have a share screen. With it, they also have a teacher dashboard. That's not something you're gonna to wanna to share on your screen that is going to be for you to be able to see student responses. It was originally designed where you can get on an iPad or a tablet or something and look at it. If I am doing Pear Deck on a Google Meet, I usually have it on my phone, okay? Um, or I have a Chromebook. Um, I have an iPad, but I'm also an ed techie kind of person, so I got lots of devices. But it will work on your phone where you can just kind of scan through and look at stuff. Um, I am going to share it with all of you guys today uh, so that way you can see what it looks like, okay? So um, is this compatible with Seesaw? Yes and no. I'll explain how it can be worked with Seesaw a little bit later when we share it. So to give you a general idea, this is what a teacher sees, is they're going to see their screen with all of the student responses that are anonymous. That's the one they're sharing, and they're gonna be able to have their iPad or something that has all of the student names on it. It'll make more sense when we actually do it. Students are going to see the one that's presented by the teacher, see all the anonymous responses, and then look at their screen where they can answer a question, okay? So knowing that, Let's figure out how to create an interactive lesson and I'll show you how ridiculously simple this is, okay? First of all, we're gonna use Pear Deck templates. Then I'll show you how to create some custom slides and then we're gonna kind of look at the Pear Deck menu and then we're gonna share it out, okay? So with Pear Deck, there's six types of questions that you can share um, or you can have. Text questions, multiple choice questions, the ones that have stars, that's the drawing question and the draggable question, those are for premium accounts, but any other time, the other ones are free. A number, which says you have to input a number. 
and a website, which is going to link them to a website, but it's nice because it will link a student to the website right inside the um, right inside the screen itself. Okay. So knowing that, let's talk about creating from templates. So I'm going to start over really quick in case someone missed it. First of all, we do have premium accounts. Everyone should have a premium account at APS now until the end of May. Uh, then they're going to work out hopefully getting classroom and or teacher and or school uh, discounts on all of these things that we may not have money for next year. So I'm going to close this out and I'm going to go to add-ons and choose Pear Deck or I can just click on that Pear Deck button if it shows up while you're building your slide deck. Okay, so I just opened up my Pear Deck right here while I'm building the slide deck. What's going to pop up here, we're going to avoid these for a moment. I know it seems weird, but we're going to avoid these. <laughs> we're going to go to our template library. Okay, so if I click on this arrow, I have a template library that has all of these different slides that are already created. So if I scroll down, they have slides for beginning of the lesson. They have slides created for during the lesson, at the end of a lesson, critical thinking. Okay, so let's just start with this beginning of the lesson one right here. I'm going to click on it. And you're going to notice that it's going to pull up all of these different slides and they have little images on them. Um, it's kind of nice. And it will tell you what type of slide it is. So there's a text slide. Most of these are text slides. This is a drawing one. And you can pick which one you want. And most of the time, they keep them fairly vague. So that way, you can use them across content area, or you can use them across um, grade levels. OK? So I'm going to click on this, what do you wonder about today's topic? And I'm just going to click on it once. And you're going to notice that it's going to say working. And then on my slide, it's just going to pop it right in here. OK, so it just plopped it right down. So if you notice on my slide, there is a bar on the bottom. You have to keep this bar right here on your slide presentation for it to work with Pear Deck. So don't remove this bar. But you can change anything else on these slide templates. So instead of you say, what do you wonder about the topic, you can get rid of this and add a different question. You can even get rid of the person and add a different image. <clears throat> OK? So it kind of depends on how you want to set that up. And somehow I accidentally duplicated that. Sorry. So going back, let's add in some different types of questions. So that was a beginning of the lesson. And you know what? I'm going to do this real quick. I turned it off when I restarted my computer. So it should be a little bit easier for you to follow my cursor now. If I go to this during the lesson one and I click on it, you're going to notice that there's a whole bunch of other slides. And they kind of have that same look and feel and theme to them. And if I go to true or false, we're just going to put one in there for uh, for fun. Um, 2020 was the best year ever. OK, let's put that question in there and see what people say. Um, so here it is, 2020 over here. This is a true false. And if you notice, it has a little different icon on the bottom. So now it's multiple choice. OK, so you can go ahead and do that for a lot of different um, slides. What I do like is if you scroll further down, they do have some slides that are for social emotional learning, which is really great to add in those checks. Like, how are you feeling? How are you doing? Uh, they have content subject area ones down here as well. So if you have younger grades, K through two, it has some examples for the littles. Okay. So I think I'm going to add this one in for a drawing slide. That'll be in our example for that one. So I'm just going to throw in a drawing slide and later on I can change the pictures or the letters, but um, it can be compatible with younger students. And this is why I say I like it on the iPad because they can really use that on there. Um, same thing for not just that, but for content area. So if I pull a math one, um, they have different shapes. So upping it for higher grades, you can have that as well. Solve and enter your problem, draw it and show your work. Um, 
And over here, I'm going to click on solve the problem and type a numerical answer. I'll just put like 7 plus 4. Um, 7 plus 4. And let me see Bobby why it's doing that when I click on the type of question. It's like, um, I think what you might be doing is you might be clicking on these. We're going to go through the template library. So that's where all those options are is if you click on the template library. Okay. So in general, we have a text, a true and false. We have a drawing one and an addition subtraction one. Uh, let's throw in a social studies one and let me find a draggable one because we don't have one of those. Aha. Um, where are countries? So I'm going to shove that one in there. Okay. So now what I've essentially done is I just created a slide presentation that is interactive all the way from here down to here. That's all you have to do. So I just created a Pear Deck slide deck. Now, with that being said, I love the templates, but they don't have my content on them. And I've built tons of slides already. And I want to use already created Google Slides, right? That's where these buttons here come in, OK? So if I scroll down, we're going to do a text one on this. If you notice, there's no bar on here. And I'm not going to use the template library this time, OK? This time I have my own slide. This is my slide. This is mine. I'm going to add text to this slide. So if I go here and say, all right, I want to add text to this, I'm going to click on the text icon. And now it's going to look a little bit different. OK, some of these you can adjust it and change it. Some of these you can't. So this is where I say that the teacher view is going to be a little bit different from the student view, because if I go ABC add text to this, I feel like nothing happened. Right. I'm like, all right, I clicked the text button. What did it do? Students can write their response with a text question. You need to be sure to put the question in the slide itself and students will be able to respond with that type of Pear Deck, OK? That's going to be a little bit different than some of these other selections here, OK? So what I mean is if I go here to, on a scale of Baby Yoda, how are you feeling today? We're going to make this multiple choice on 1 through 9, OK? So if I click on multiple choice, unlike before where it had it already built in with like one, two, or three choices, this time I can customize it, OK? So if you notice, the multiple choice slide options, I can now insert what I want. So I can say option one, and I'm going to do that all the way to option nine. I'm going to add another one. I probably should have picked a smaller picture. OK. So once I fill this all out, what's nice is it's going to pull this almost like a chart when we and apparently I'm going to update my slide through six. No one can pick seven, eight, or nine. Uh, <laughs> but let's say you just did that and you want to change it. You don't click here. You don't click um, here inside the slide. You actually have to be on the slide. And you go back to the type of question it is. And that's how you can edit it. So I'm going to pretend like I did that on purpose. So if I click here on choices, it's going to have the ones I had already inputted. And then I can either edit the ones that are there. Or I can add other ones. I think it'll be easier if I do this. OK, now I'm going to update that slide. And what you're going to notice is in the teacher notes down here, it's going to tell you what options you put down. Because like I said, the teacher view, you're not going to see it. You're just going to see that blank slide. It pulls up when it's in the student view. OK? Looking at draggable slides, these are ones that are paid for premium, but we do have that option right now. What I love about draggables, so I'm going to click on this, is you can change colors, you can change images, you can change icons, you can have a whole bunch of them on the screen, so you can use this for, um, so this is going to be a dot, so I want to show you, you can use this for math right here, so you can have greater than, less than, create those as draggables. You can put equal sign. You can have students put the right type of um, 
why can't I think of it? Symbol, math symbol. You can put numbers so students can put that into like a, a chart or a graph. You can have little icons here and then you can have sort of um, exclamation. Okay, I'm gonna stick to a dot, uh, but you can add some different shapes. And you can go here and you can change the color. So I have red for acute angles. And then I'm going to add another dot, but I'm going to make it blue for obtuse angles. Now, before I leave, though, I want to make sure that I have enough draggables to match what's on here. So I have an obtuse and obtuse. So I got two obtuses. So I want to add another blue one. Make sure I've got that together. And I think I have three red ones. So I'm going to make sure I add three red dots. So that way there's enough to drag to each one of those images. Okay. Now, if you notice, there's this bar here where I can make that draggable picture way big, or I can make it smaller. Okay. I'm going to update that slide and you're going to notice on the bottom, they're going to be here on the bottom. Uh, if we do create slides this year with premium, will they still work next year if we don't get premium? Uh, that's a yes and a no. I have, what, the one thing with Pear Deck is they're really willing to work with you. Um, so I've said, hey, I wanna share presentations or I wanna do this. Is there any way you can give me a, um, like a code for a premium account or um, can you extend this? Uh, they're usually pretty good with um, doing that for you. So I'm, I'm gonna throw that out there and say that some of them like draggable and stuff may not necessarily work, but they kind of um, work with you, especially if they see that you're sharing it or you're doing that often. Okay. The next one is drawing. There's so many tools in drawing and they're so wonderful. I want you to check it out, how you can use it with text by highlighting and doing different things. But for draw, you just click on draw and it's going to plop it in there really fast. <laughs> And you don't really get to do much or change much on a draw slide, but it does give students a lot of tools, okay? Now, <clears throat> going along with this, um, you can add audio to a slide, okay? So I do like that it has some accessibility things built in. It's gonna look weird because on our slide, it's gonna say audio included. The students access audio down here. Okay, so on the live slide, they're going to have audio down here, and they're also going to have an immersive reader down here. So they do have an immersive reader built in for students who need to have that immersive reader um, accommodation, or it's just good for generally and general students anyway. So I'm going back to this slide, and I'm going to add audio to this slide. And so it's going to say add audio, and it's going to load a recorder. I'm going to be able to record. So I'm going to say... Oh, and I have to allow my microphone. Make sure to highlight similes, metaphors, hyperbole, and alliteration with your drawing tools on this page. Okay, I'm gonna, you can normally listen to it, but I'm gonna go ahead and just save it. And then once I hear it and I feel like it's good, I'm gonna add that audio to the slide. And like I said, it's gonna seem a little bit weird because on our end, you're gonna wanna click on this and be like, the audio is not working. I don't know what it's doing. Uh, it's gonna add it in the live student version. Okay, so is there any questions so far about just adding those things to the slides? Because that's essentially it. Now we're gonna play with the teacher dashboard and how to share it. But for now, that is in a nutshell, how to add those types of things to Google Slides. Um, let me figure out what happened on that, Margaret, with them sharing the teacher dashboard. Uh, that is odd. It shouldn't happen that way because it should only be tied to your account. So let's figure out why that, um, why that happened. A uh, teacher can't necessarily see the, te the student view. Um, you're going to see it as a student, and I'll show you what the teacher sees in a second. Um, I am going to have you guys see what it looks like as a kid because I'm going to have you get on like a kid in just a second. And um, ah, the website, okay, valid argument, I forgot one. Down here on the website, um, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. Uh, Templates, okay, I hope I remember that off the top of my head. Um, it, you can remove the bar 
and then put it back on. So essentially that's what I'm doing. So if I go here to website, it's just going to ask me for the link right here. And oh my goodness, Paradeg, I had it on there.com slash templates. I really hope that's the right one off the top of my head. And it's going to load it here to show you what it looks like. Usually, usually I might not have it do it because it's getting upset. I'm just going to let it go. Stop it. Hmm. Okay. So now it's adding that website. So that's all it does with the website, but we're going to play with it here in a second. Okay. Um, um, they're going to be able to see the original presentation, but I'll show you on the teacher dashboard. There is a way to share student responses to them and it'll automatically pull it into their drive. So I'll show you that in a minute. So there are two different ways to present Pear Deck. OK, so now let's talk about the presenting piece of this. There's the instructor paste version and then there's the student paste version. OK, so what I'm going to do, I know it's some kind of odd. I'm going to go way back up here to that pink slide that I kind of kept skipping around. We're going to look at student instructor mode now. Before I start a lesson, so I have my Pear Deck open. This is how I start a lesson through Pear Deck is right here on this green play button. OK, if I go to these three bars here, you have to make a decision and I'm going to say yes. Because if you do want to have students getting their responses and you want it tied to the same student name every time, and I'll show you why you might want to do that, I would have students turn on their email. I get it's kind of hard for K through two students, but if you let parents know this is coming, setting up the Pear Deck, once they get into Pear Deck one time at joinpd.com, it should, I'm gonna knock on wood, it should pull that Google information every time they pull, log in after that, okay? So I'm going to make sure this is turned on and then I'm going to go ahead and go to start lesson. I'm going to go ahead and start with instructor paste and then halfway through I'm going to flip it to student paste so you can see how that's different. So if I go to instructor paste activity, I'm going to start a brand new session and it's launching that presentation. It's just taking a second. And this is where I'm a little bit worried and I please hope that it works uh, because I haven't done this with like 200, maybe 300 some people. If you're on live stream, you can go ahead and feel free to, um, feel free to go ahead and participate along with us, okay? So on the join code, well, I'm not gonna do join code. Give me one second. I'm gonna show you before I do that. You notice that it opened up this little box right here, right? This is my teacher box. I don't have to have it open on the same screen. I can go to um, app.pairduck.com slash dash and it'll, I can open that up on a different device. So I, this is what I usually have on my phone is this little one. This one here is the one that I'm sharing with you guys on the screen, just like you might want to do with students. I wasn't trying to do that. So this is where my screen's going to get a little weird because normally you're not trying to share the teacher one and the student one like at the exact same time, but we're going to do that today. So here is the teacher presentation. I'm just going to have this one over here a tiny bit for the teacher dashboard. And you guys are going to get in as students and see what it looks like as students. So I'm going to open up this right here again. So it's on. And I want you to go to joinpd.com on a new tab. So go up on a new tab. Go to joinpd.com and put in this code, A-T-N-J-F-Q. It might ask you, and I got nine people in so far, it might ask you, hey, log in with Google. So you're going to want to say, yes, I'm going to log in with Google, but you're just going to want to go to joinpd.com, go to ATNJFQ. Now someone said, I want to know what it looks like as a student and I'm praying I don't crash this thing. I'm going to get in as a student too, because this is where I just tempt fate. Okay. So ATNJFQ, I'm going to go ahead and get here in here as a student. And if you notice, I have to log in here into my Google as a student account. So the first time they're going to have to log in. And then after that, it should pull it. So I didn't even have to put in my password or anything because I've been in here before. As a student, you're going to see that first screen. 
you cannot move off that screen or get off that screen unless I'm off of it. Okay, so that's what's kind of nice with Pear Deck. I have 197, 200 people in. I'll wait a couple seconds to get like 10 to 15 more people in. I know we got like 10 minutes, so that's going to be fun. Even if you're not in, you can still get into the Pear Deck um, after the fact by just following that code up here, knowing to go to joinpd.com. Okay, so I'm going to continue for the sake of some time. And I have my presentation here. And if you notice on your screen as a student, I'm in the presenter mode. And if I go on to this arrow, I'm going to say, OK, students, what do you wonder about today's topic? On my screen, it's just going to look like this. But on the student screen, what you guys should be seeing is this. You're going to be able to type in your answer right here. OK, so type in that answer. And if you don't see what I'm talking about because you're just on the paradigm screen, don't worry. Just go ahead and type in your answer. It will continue to share all of your slides. It just makes the Pear Deck slides the ones that are interactive. I wouldn't even suggest having a ton of Pear Deck ones that are interactive because that's going to be like insane. Just have a few of them spaced out. OK, so if I go on my teacher dashboard, you're going to notice that I have. Sorry, I don't want to throw your names out here, but I have names here where I can see their responses. But what you're going to want to share with students is this screen. So this is the screen. Whoops, helps if I don't go off the screen. Uh, go back. I knew it was going to freak it out just a tiny bit. Lots of responses. Um, I have a, ah, no. I'm not going to touch it. It's going really slow. So hang on. Stay, stay. All right. If I show responses on my screen, I'm going to go pretty slow. I can see all of the typed responses, but they're not tied to a student's name. So that's what's kind of nice about the sharing the screen for students is I say, OK, go back to our Meet tab, guys, and let's look at what people have said. Will I be able to apply this? How easy it to create a Paradex slide? How long will it take students to learn this? So very similar to Nairpod. So these are some responses that I'm looking at. I may not have time to read them all out loud to students, but I can go back to my teacher dashboard and I can go back and look at these. I can also star an answer, give feedback to a student right from Pear Deck, and I can hide a response. So if there's an inappropriate response or response that's not very good, I can go ahead and hide that. Okay. Going on to the next one, now you should have a true false option on your screen right now. Do you think that 2020 was the best year ever? So if I show responses, I can see in real time that I have 100 false and about nine true. Um, the one thing with Pear Deck is you don't necessarily know if it got sent. As long as you just click on it, it should be sent. You can change it afterwards too. This is what the student sees. If I go back to that teacher dashboard, I'm able to see how many people said true and look up their names, and then I can see false and how many people did that here. Okay, so like I said, you don't want to share that teacher dashboard, but it's really nice to kind of have. Now, it is a little bit tricky because I will wait. Normally, you don't have 242 people in a session at the same time. Uh, you may not see the responses because you need to go back to the Meet tab and look at my screen to see what the student responses look like. Um, yes, it's easier if a student has a split screen or you have them learn how to do flipping back and forth from tabs. Uh, the teacher dashboard pops up right when you begin a presentation. It has this little screen right here that automatically comes up. I just would suggest sharing a tab on your screen or sharing your screen and putting this one up on a different one. So like on a Mac, you can put a different one up here. Uh, that way the student doesn't see those responses. Okay. Um, I'm going to go on to the next slide. 
So now this is a drawing slide. So if you're on a drawing slide, you can take any of those drawing tools and circle any items that start with B. And while you guys do that, I'll see if I can answer some questions. Um, sign in with Google before a lesson. If you go through PearDeck.com or you go to JoinPD.com, once the student puts in their code, it's just going to ask them to sign in through Google that way. And it's just much easier just to have them sign in with their Gmail account and then their password. So that's pretty much how to do it. Um, uh, they should see the slides right away. It might not function because it would be the first time using Pear Deck, but essentially it should. So I'm going to say should. I can't promise anything though. Um, so basically, if I go to my view, I can see where everyone drew and I can see names. But let's go to the student view. Well, not student view, but the full screen view where it's anonymous. If I show these responses, there's a couple of ways to show a drawing response. Okay, so if I go, come on, show responses. Killing me, Smalls. Come on. I can see it. There's way lots of people, so I'm trying not to freak it out. Don't freak out on me. If I show responses, I have this grid view where I can show students all of the answers as a grid. So I can say, okay, it looks like a lot of us have a lot of the same answers. Someone in the class missed bat, but that one's a tricky one, I saw it. Um, ooh, I like how this person put X's on theirs. Okay, so you can scroll through and see all of the responses and see how they match up. Now, the one I'm afraid of doing is you can layer them on top of each other and see how everyone has the same layer, but it creates some craziness and it might freak it out now that we have 200 people. Well, let's try it anyway. Um, see, so you can see them all layered on top of each other. <laughs> so you can see like, well, the dog's kind of open. Um, Obviously, if you have 200 people, that may not be the best view for that. Um, you can create this as an assignment. So I'm going to go ahead and skip that one and the number one because you just put in a number. That one's not that hard. Um, come on. For the draggable one, I'm going to let you guys play with this one for a little bit while I talk about it. Um, on the draggable one, what's nice on the teacher view is if you do have this grid view layout, you can look at one of the draggable pieces like one at a time. Except now I think it's gonna freeze because it's too big. But I could have looked at just the Australia one and see if everyone got Australia. And I can look at just the Africa one and see if everybody knew where Africa was. Um, like I said, we don't normally do this with 200 and some people, so it's freaking it out just a tiny bit. But hopefully, um, I'm going to go back to that list view then. And hopefully we can see it a little bit better. But I can see, um, I can filter out those particular um, options, which of course right now it's not working. Um, so let me go back to my live one. And I'm going to show responses and see if that one's going to come up. So this is a teacher-led lesson. I was going to let you guys go ahead and go. I'm going to keep this open. <laughs> I have to go to another one. We do have a Q&A. I'm going to share the slide deck for this one. I know it went kind of short. It's amazing what happens in 50 minutes. Um, we can do a longer Pear Deck session with individuals as well or with small groups at schools. Um, but in a nutshell, that's how you create a Pear Deck slide deck. Once you're done with this Pear Deck, I'm going to end the session. Not right now, but I'm going to keep it open so you can keep playing in it. Later on, I'll end the session and I can go back to that Pear Deck website and I can look at my student responses from there and I can go ahead and pull those out in a Google Doc. I think I just froze it though, which is absolutely amazing. Um, when to assign a Pear Deck, this is great. To assign, they're like, it can take up to 500 people. I'm like, that's a lie. Um, if you do student paste mode instead of teacher led mode, it's just gonna create a link 
and you just share the link with students and the students will be able to work through it at their own pace. And it's going to save it just like it does here on the teacher dashboard, like they're all doing it together, but they're actually going to be doing it separately. Yeah, I'm gonna close out the teacher dashboard for the moment. So that way this will hopefully catch up and not freak out. So when, when you're logged in as a student, the student can't see when you're sharing responses for the whole class. There isn't necessarily a workaround for this because, sadly and annoyingly, it was created originally to be done in the classroom where you're sharing it on a Promethean board and everybody can look at it. And then they all have devices at their desks, which will be great if we ever go back. Um, the thing is that you're going to have to share it kind of like when I'm doing through the meet and say, okay, guys, go back to the meet, go back to the tab, go back to the meet. Very hard for littles. With the littles, I don't know if it's even necessarily super important for them to see each other's responses at the same time. So what you can do, and I've seen some teachers work around with this and I'm afraid of, I might go on to the next slide just to see if it'll reset it is they will share the responses after students have done the asynchronous instruction by themselves. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch this over to asynchronous instruction and you guys can go through those activities at your own time. So instead of being locked on the screen, I'm gonna turn student paste mode on and you guys can go through the rest of the slide deck at your own pace whenever you want to. And I'm gonna keep this open for the rest of the day so you can stay in there and play with it, okay? And that would be the link that I would send to students. So this is where I said you can have a student link or you can stop right in the middle and say, okay, this small group is gonna go work on their slide deck, switch it to student paste mode, open a breakout room and the students are working on their student paced part of that, or, um, or you can um, flip it around a different way. Okay. And now it just freaked it out again. So sadly it's semi frozen. So I'm going to just hang here for a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the link to the actual presentation it's in a PDF form. I can't share this presentation uh, with you guys because it's not technically technically mine. It's owned by Pear Deck for Pear Deck training. So you have to be sort of a Pear Deck trainer. And so um, I don't have the ability to give it away, but I can give a PDF version of it. So it has all the links in it. It has all the information on it. It has all the slides like you can see it. It's just not the actual slide deck, which is annoying. Finally, the draggable one worked. So here's all the draggable ones. Right now, um, you guys should be in student pace mode and not locked onto the screen that I'm on, and you should be able to work through them at your own pace. Yes, Nicole, that's what I was going to mention with Seesaw, is you can add that self-paced link into Seesaw through one of the activities in Seesaw and say, okay, complete this Pear Deck, have them complete it asynchronously, then bring them all together synchronously and share the responses that they all did on the slides. You don't have to put their name. You can still keep it anonymous and share it and say, okay, I noticed that these students all answered it this way. Cause you can go back as long as you have a premium account, you can go back and look at those um, slides. So I'm going to go here to home and I can look at my dashboard here at app.pearduck.com. Nope, that wasn't the right thing. Pearduck.com, sorry. If I go to pearduck.com, I'll have access. I'm still running the sessions of those, so it's going to freak it out. Um, if I go up to the top on sessions, I can go back and look at all of the different sessions that I already ran. And I know we have another one. I think the other one I'm doing is it too, because this is how my life is functioning at the moment. So, if you do have questions, um, I have on that Pear Deck that I just shared at the very last slide, I think, we have our feedback form, a Q&A form.